Never was a love so strong as the love they call my name. Never was a love so fierce as the love that took my shame. Never was a love so true as the love that shed his blood. Never was a love so wide as that precious crimson flood. Oh my, my, hallelujah, his love has lifted me. Oh my, my, his love has lifted me. As high as the heavens, as deep as the sea, as wild as a river, is my Savior's love for me. Oh my, my, His love has lifted me. Wild as a river is 
morning, everybody. Welcome to River Heights Vineyard. My name is Rena. I'm one of the worship leaders here, and I'm glad to see you this morning. We're going to start with a time of uh, worship together, so why don't you stand and join me as you are able. God, I thank you for this morning. Thank you that we can gather together as, as your family. <clears throat> thank you for the way that you, you meet us, uh, the way that you are here with us now. And please speak to us this morning. And we welcome you here.
Every week, we have the opportunity to take communion together as a church family. There are two tables on the stage and one in the back of the room uh, with unleavened bread and juice on them. These elements signify Jesus' sacrifice for us on the cross. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. You can go to the Lord's table anytime in the next two songs to receive the elements. coming with love and then 
This next song is a newer one for us. Uh, Justin introduced it a couple of weeks ago. It's called The Name. And I found it very, I don't know, powerful and encouraging to be singing the names of our Lord. So let's do that together.
lift up your name, Lord. You can have a seat. Uh, so good to worship together this morning as our family. And uh, here's announcements. Here they are. Come on up and read them. Just kidding. How y'all doing today? Yeah! It's barbecue day. Short day. <laughs> Gotta love it. Ah, so that's one of our announcements, but we'll talk about that later. It is great to have you here today. My name is Jeff, one of the pastors here. Happy day. Sorry, I didn't mean to steal your thunder, Pete. Um, but man, it's a great day. Not too hot, not too cold. Well, it's not cold at all. Uh, and it's going to be a beautiful day for a barbecue. So, so excited you guys are here today. Uh, if you're new, welcome. This is our home. This is part of our vineyard, or part of our vineyard, part of our family here. We have a first service. We got online folks. How you doing? Elbow bumps. Good to see you online as well. Man, it's great to have you guys with us today. If you are new, we would love to get to meet you after the service. Head out to the Welcome Center on your way out today. Pete is going to lead us today in teaching, and so he would love to meet you as well. Uh, and the thing about it is, we just, we just love people. It's so great, which, you know, that's who we are here at uh, River Heights Vineyard. Uh, our main, main vein that we flow through is that we want to help a growing number of people love God and love people and change the world. And so we just love people to understand who they are in Christ and go do what God's called them to do. And so that's what we do. That's who we are. Uh, and we love to, there's different ways that you can give to that, uh, that mission and vision. And, you know, there's you know, physical and all that, but also giving uh, as well financially. So we love to, I'd love to pray for us on that because there's two ways you can do that. Uh, one is online or one is uh, through the old school way, through an envelope with cash or checks. So let me pray for for us this morning. So Holy Spirit, just come. Just come, Holy Spirit. Just thank you for your provision for us. Thank you for watching over us, guiding us, directing us, God. Give us wisdom. Help us to help River Heights be a beacon in Invergrove Heights, West St. Paul, South St. Paul. God, we just thank you so much. For all that you've given River Heights, may we be able to give back to the community. In Jesus' name, amen. In your program is a connection card. If you could pull that out for us today uh, or for me, fill that out with as much information as you feel comfortable doing. If you're a member, a regular attender, at least put your name on it. Here's the deal. It's not for attendance like, oh, you missed last week. Shame on you. No, it's so that we as a staff, every week we get to pray for you. And if you write your, at least write your name down, then we know that you're here so we can pray for you. Uh, this is a great way to communicate with the staff. So fill that connection card out. Let us know that you're here. On the reverse side, you can actually give a specific reason why we should pray for you or how we can come alongside you and your family and pray with you, pray for you. Because uh, we love to do that. We get to do that every week. Uh, so make sure you do that for us. And then drop those in the connection boxes on your way out. Also, let us know how God is working in your life, that how you see God moving. Uh, that's a God story. Even if it is, God saved me at work this week. You know, that's a God story because God does amazing things, even in the little stuff. So uh, we want to know that. So write that on your uh, a little God story down for us as well. Then we can share it to people. That'd be awesome. A lot of stuff going on at River Heights. You can check it out at river, www.riverheightsvineyard.org. Uh, or I'm just going to say a few things. One, barbecue today. Don't get too excited. I mean, geez. We got like five tables out there, and they're already full of food. It's just crazy. Plus, we have burgers and buns and dogs. Oh, my gosh. There's so much food out there. So excited. Come back. Enjoy it. If you have your food at home, come back. If you don't know what to bring, A through M is side dish. N through Z is dessert. Bring it. We're going to have fun. Lavinia, we're all going to be doing it together. It's going to be a blast. This Friday is Holy Spirit Night. Super excited because Sunday mornings are kind of restricted to time and we want to see the Holy Spirit move because the Holy Spirit moves on Sunday mornings. But what Friday night does is it opens it up for even more time and just extended worship, extended prayer time and ministry time. And it's just a sweet time with the Holy Spirit and with each other. So I would encourage you to come seven to nine on Friday night, June 17th. Uh, it's a great time that we get to, to spend together. And then afterwards, a lot of people go to Applebee's. So it's kind of like a big party. 
So we party with the Holy Spirit, then party with each other at Applebee's. It'll be a great time. I would encourage you to come 7 to 9 o'clock on Friday. Last thing, summer life groups are starting June 19th. This is a great way to get connected to people, get connected to God. I mean, that is one amazing way to grow your relationship with Christ is to do it together. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. So I would encourage you, get involved in a life group. There are a ton of them. You have the catalog in your program. They're on the wall as you walk out. Uh, it, we got like 13 of them. So check one out. Find out what time works for you, what, what you like to look at, and, and that, those types of things. But they kick off on June 19th. I'm going to invite Holly to come up. Oh, she even brought her real prop this time. Uh, but Holly has a group, and she's going to share what that group is all about. Good morning. My name is Holly. The sleeping nugget is Mabel. Um, we are hosting a life group on Saturday evenings at 5 o'clock. Um, myself, my husband, and then Amanda and Sam Marsden. Um, it's called Picnics and Parents. Um, not to be confused with the other alliterative 5 p.m. Saturday group, which is barbecues and board games. Um, but ours meets every week, and theirs is only every other. So if you... <laughs> I suppose you could do both and just do mine on the off weeks. Um, so Saturday night's 5 o'clock, really low-key, because we understand life happens, and it's summer, and hopefully you get out of town at least once. Um, so show up when you can. Bring something you and your family will eat, whether that's PB&J, hot dogs to grill, or canes or Little Caesars that you pick up on the way there. Um, we're going to meet at a variety of places, either at our house with a fenced backyard and play equipment, um, the Marsdens, which is like going to a park because they have a trampoline and a sandbox and another play set, um, or parks around the city. I am very picky about what parks we will be going to because I require an actual bathroom not just porta potties. Um, make sure there's there's places to sit for people to eat, and then also hopefully grills if people want to use those. Um, if you are interested, intrigued, please sign up. Uh, that way you can decide if you want to come on any given Saturday, and you will know where we are meeting that week because there will be a check text chain of where we're meeting. Um, it says picnics and parents, but don't let that name fool you. If you are a parent, come. If you like a parent, come. If you want to come parent my children, I have extra. Um, so you don't have to bring kids of your own, but they are all welcome. Everyone's welcome. Just come hang out with us. Have fun. Hopefully we'll even get a chance to pray for people. So that's the goal. We'll see you on Saturday nights at five. Yeah. Thanks, Holly. That's awesome. And I think they actually already have people signed up that aren't parents. So encourage you to do that. Just check out our catalog. Life groups are a great way to connect, connect with each other and connect with God. Hey, let's do this. Let's just uh, spend a couple minutes, say hi to each other, hi to somebody you haven't seen before, and we'll get uh, Pete up here to share a message. service is bigger today. It's like there's a barbecue. Yeah. Way to come, folks. Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday. I am Pete. I am also one of the pastors here. And uh, today's sermon is going to be more testimonial than usual. If you are visiting today, this is an unusual week. So one of the lessons I think that we learn from the Bible, especially the Apostle Paul's writings, is the importance of sharing our stories. Paul's writings are filled with references to how often his readers heard his stories. He retells his stories again. And they're also filled with Paul referencing the people's stories that he's writing to. He's familiar with their stories as well. So I'm going to share some of my own story today. And I do that because I hope that you'll see the hand of God in it. And I hope that will encourage you that God's hand is moving in your life as well. Whether you are on a mountaintop or whether you are in the valley. Uh, whatever else my story might illustrate, the glory of every good thing that I have experienced goes to God, who saved my life and has given me a new way to live. Before I share my story, let's see what our Bible reading plan has for us today. John 16, 12 to 15. 
This is Jesus talking in the middle of one of the great stretches of Scripture in all the Bible. It's called the Upper Room Discourse. It's John 13 to 17, and it is Jesus' last night with the people he loves. And so it contains Jesus just pouring out his heart for his followers and even praying for his followers and all who would come in the future. All right? And here's what it has to say in John 16, 12 to 15. Jesus says, There's so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said, the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. So there's a lot going on in these verses. As context, Jesus has just told his followers that if I go away, it is in fact better for you because if I go away, I can send you the Holy Spirit. That is how powerful the Holy Spirit of God is in Scripture. It is better for those of us who follow Jesus than the actual physical presence of Jesus. And here in these verses, Jesus shares what the Spirit's going to do. The Spirit is the one who guides us into truth, who lets us know where to head because we, that God knows what's coming. And this is going to glorify Jesus. So when he was with us, Jesus could only speak to those in his presence. Huge crowds would build up and follow him around, and he would try to get away from them, and they would totally find out, and then they would follow him to the new place, right? Because you had to be physically present with Jesus in order to hear anything that he would say. And people were left with the opportunity to respond to Jesus' words. His teaching was the most beautiful of any human being since the dawn of time. But his teaching is incredibly hard to live up to. Like, really hard. You listen to the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus says, don't get angry with people. It's like murdering them in your heart. How are you guys doing it? never being angry with anyone? Is that working out for anybody here? Right? No, not so well. Christ's ascension into heaven is what sends us the Holy Spirit. And through the Spirit, we are both called and empowered to hear and follow God's voice into the truth. We're given guidance, and then along with that guidance, we get the strength to live out God's guidance. We do it imperfectly because we're still human, but we do it with greater power because we're in partnership with a living God who partners with us. The Bible is super clear in Luke 11. God's plan is for every person, all y'all who are here, to connect to God day by day, again and again, through the Holy Spirit. Luke 11, 9 to 13 says this, And so I tell you, keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. And so what is it we are asking, seeking, and knocking for? Let's read on. You fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? I think that would be funny. And I might do something like that, but it would have to be a non-venomous snake. Um, or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. And so if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And so God's plan for your life is to keep on asking so that God can keep on giving because God is generous. It is to keep on seeking because God wants to help you find. It is to keep knocking because God will open doors for you. Now, on that note, I want to share some of my own recent journey of trusting the Holy Spirit. Three and a half years ago, my friend Jeff told me the first thing he was doing on his sabbatical. I was like, sabbatical? You get to, like, not get paid and go on a break from work? He's like, yep. He said, the first thing I'm going to do is attend the Festival of Homiletics. And I just started laughing at him. I laughed at him so hard, I actually fell on the ground. I was like, okay, homiletics means preaching, for those of you who are not on board. And this so-called festival is seven days of being preached at three to four times a day for up to two hours every time. Is that a festival? Who wants to go? And you pay a ridiculous amount of money for this privilege. You know? 
It's like really expensive to go to this thing. And so I could not control my laughter at this ridiculous pastor friend. And so, of course, the following year, it's held in Minneapolis, and my friend says, hey, will you go with me? And I love my friend. And so I say yes. And while I was there, God answered a prayer I had been praying for four or five years. So John Marsden's one of our founding pastors here, and he attended seminary when he was younger. And it was paid for, my understanding is, by an anonymous Christian who wanted to fund a young man's growth and discipleship by sending him to seminary. And I discovered in my early 40s that all of a sudden I love learning. I have no idea where that came from. And I started praying, God, would you provide me a free local seminary? I want to learn and grow. I want to do it in person so we can have relationships and discuss and dialogue. And I want to do it while I'm serving my church because this is the greatest community of people that I have ever known. And so for four or five years, I prayed without any faith at all. God, would you just give me what you gave John? It was really just envy in prayer form, right? Like, could you just, could someone send me to seminary? And so I went to the Festival of Homiletics and they announced something crazy. A donor had given $30 million so that every student for three years who got accepted could attend an accelerated seminary program at Luther Seminary. And not only was it free, they pay you a salary while you do it. And instead of being a four-year program, they ram it all into two years. Now this was all announced to me and all I heard was free. I was like, what? You know, I was blown away. And so I started praying. God, is this really it? You ever hear the one about the guy and the floodwaters are rising and the boat comes? They're like, get in the boat. He's like, no, I'm praying God's going to rescue me. And then more people come and eventually a helicopter comes. He's like, no, I'm waiting for, to be rescued by God. So that was me, right? I'm sitting here praying for free local seminary. And then I'm like, but is it really you, God? <laughs> now, I knew some people who attended Luther. I didn't know very much about Lutheranism. They asked in the interview what I knew about Lutheranism, and I said, uh, Lutherans are mostly nicer than me. Uh, that's all I got, right? And two years ago, I got accepted, and I started my re-education. And I've had the most wonderful two years of education that you can possibly imagine. It has been wonderful. Again and again, I have been stunned with how generous of heart how totally in love with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, how kind and compassionate, how insightful and how joyful my professors and my classmates have been. Some of the best people I've ever met in my entire life are teaching classes in a seminary. Who would have guessed this? I love one of my professors so much. He came and preached here during COVID, and we're going to have him come preach again toward the end of summer. Ralph is awesome. I can't wait to reshare him with you all. I got another professor. I love this guy so much that I sent him a list of five disciplines of philosophy, and he's going to send me a list of five books. I'm going to read one a month, write a one-page summary of my thoughts on the topic, and talk about it with him over whiskey. I'm going to do that until he's so tired of me that he can't do it anymore. I have been really blown away by God's generosity in putting excellent people in my life to learn from, which means way more than brilliant people who don't love well. So I worked in universities for about 15 years, and I went to college for 15 years, like before my master's program, and I was not expecting great people. I was expecting brilliant, cranky people, right? And instead I got something way better. So these experiences are the direct result of my praying and asking, and then of God having my ears open to God's leading. I could have said, no, God, I'm not going to the Festival of Homiletics with my friend. That's the dumbest idea he or you have ever had, right? But instead, I got to go, and I got to hear about this free seminary. And when I asked everyone and prayed, I mean, there are a lot of reasons not to do a double full-time graduate program while working full-time and parenting and having a life, right? But in the end, I heard the Spirit of God, and the Spirit of God said, go, I have this for you. And because in the end, it's the voice of God that wins out, I started this program, and God brought these amazing people into my life. What's the point? God has put good people into your life too. Raise your hand if you can think of someone you admire, someone you'd like to be more like, someone who's made a difference in your life spiritually. We have those people, amen? amen. I want to encourage you, Ask what makes them tick. Ask them what they believe. Ask them to pray for you. Ask them about the challenges in your life that you are facing right now, in your relationships, in your work, in your home. 
and then listen and learn from them and thank God for bringing them into your life. These people are a gift and almost all of us have a hand up. Almost all of us have them. And if you don't have someone, I'd say go to church a lot longer and eventually you'll find someone. You know, there's some great people here, some people I very, very deeply admire and want to be more like and really love the opportunity to learn from. I could sit and wave my hand at lots more of you. Um, God also used my seminary experience to carry me through the hardest season I've ever gone through. Uh, I did not get expect to get divorced during a pandemic or ever. That experience was the hardest of my life by a very long shot. But while I was in seminary, following God's voice for me, following the path God opened up for me, the school required that I have a support committee in my church that would care for me on a monthly basis. And wow, did they. And having a place where I could talk about all the stuff I was facing was amazing for me. And I had Sue Marsden serving as, serving as my supervisor. I had to have a supervisor on site. And she did more than anybody alive to care for me and ask good questions and speak God's words to me and listen to me through the literal worst thing I've ever endured. At the same time, I got trained to serve as a chaplain and it was super intense. It was like frequent eight-hour days and lots of three-hour days and sometimes six-hour days where the whole goal is to learn to love and be present with people while carrying your own issues. And that helped me so much in these last couple years. And so again and again, what I experienced was God carrying me in a season I could never have predicted would leave me so unanchored. I'm now going to do something that I would have found offensive just two years ago. I'm gonna to read to you a cheesy poem. This one is Jesus and Hallmark, and uh, you might be familiar with it, it's called Footprints. And in the past, I'm way too skeptical for this kind of business, I did not believe any of what I'm about to read, but let me read it for you today. One night I dreamed a dream as I was walking along the beach with my Lord. Across the dark sky flashed scenes from my life. And for each scene, I noticed two sets of footprints in the sand, one belonging to me and one to my Lord. After the last scene of my life flashed before me, I looked back at the footprints in the sand and I noticed that many times along the path of my life, especially at the lowest and saddest times, there was only one set of footprints. This really troubled me, so I asked the Lord about it. Lord, you said once I decided to follow you, you'd walk with me all the way. But I noticed that during the saddest and most troublesome times of my life, there was only one set of footprints. I don't understand why, when I needed you most, you would leave me. He whispered, my precious child, I love you and will never leave you. Never, ever during your trials and testings. When you only saw one set of footprints, it was then that I carried you. This always seemed like cheese to me. How can God carry people? Is that really a thing? No way. But I look back, I look at how God guided me first to River Heights and then to Luther, and I can say I totally was unable to walk for a while. And God genuinely carried me, although I could not see it at the time. God can carry you too. The God who carried me did not wait till I earned it, did not carry me because I'm any different than anybody else. I mean, we're all different, but in our own way. We're unique snowflakes here in the vineyard, amen? Amen, is anyone sitting next to a unique snowflake? It might not be you, but there's one nearby, amen? All right. We are created in God's image. Every one of us in this room carries a different piece of who God is. And so if you're here and you're on a life mountaintop, things are going well, you're full of gratitude, take comfort in knowing God has your back for days to come. And if you are here and you are in the valley, you are isolated, you are feeling broken, you have no idea where God is present with you, I want you to know that God can carry you. And God has the people of God to carry you. The people of God carried me with his love. There's a sentence we would talk about in seminary with various, you know, opinions and so forth. Uh, Jesus has only one body right now, and that's you. The body of Christ on earth is the people of God. And so we get to be this for each other. 1 Corinthians 12, 26 says that if one part of Christ's body suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. We have a chance to be the community, the body, the presence of Jesus Christ in real practical ways 
for each other. God knew my time of need and provided things for me that didn't feel like enough at the time, but they were, and they were enough to carry me through and I'm alive. God can do the same for you. The most helpful part of my seminary experience wasn't the classroom, although I got to learn awesome stuff. The most helpful part was the small groups that supported me. In chaplaincy group, we met in a group of six, and we cared for each other through all the challenges of life in a pandemic with our regular lives. We all had people die. I went through a divorce. We had a woman with five kids who's like raising them and pastoring at the same time. Plus, we're doing this graduate school. It was intense. My pastoral support group met monthly, and people listened to my joys and pains, and they prayed for me. You can find relationships like this among the people of God. Many of you have them already. God bless you. Our life group semester is starting up now. And if this church is good at anything, it is caring for each other through the ups and downs of life. Could I get an amen if this church has done that for you? Right? So if you haven't been around long enough for that to happen, or if you found that you are like slow to get included, let me encourage you. You will get there. Keep on coming. Keep on trying. You're going to get cared for. We do an annual church self-study called Natural Church Development. We send in a bunch of question answers and they compare us to the other 40,000 times churches have done this and they tell you how you're doing. Our highest scoring areas historically are loving relationships and holistic small groups. That means we are unusually good for churches these days at loving each other and having life-giving community when we get together in people's homes here at the church in smaller groups. And so for the first time in two years, I get to co-lead a life group. By, uh, what's it called? Barbecue and board games. We're going to meet at the same time as parenting and picnics and parenting. And I think we should rumble. You know, they're going to throw kids at us and we're going to beat them with board game boards, you know? Like we should get together for Jesus. Uh, looking through the catalog, we have all kinds of groups that totally include a spot for you. Take a look through that thing. Do not let the opportunity go by to connect to share life with people who love Jesus and the church because they will love you. And the time will come when you need the love of God. Amen? Amen. That time may be here today. God has walked me through the flood and the flame, and God did so by the Holy Spirit, by guiding me into the truth that God had for me during that time. May God do the same for you. Keep knocking, keep seeking, keep asking. I want to invite the worship team to come back forward. I invite you to stand as you are able. We design our services so that the most important point happens right now, and that is prayer and worship. You get to respond to God out of the message or whatever you brought with you today or the worship that we are about to sing. And in responding to God, uh, that is our act of worship. That's the most important thing that happens here on a Sunday. If you're on the prayer team, could you come forward and stand up here? Uh, during worship, if you would like someone to pray for you, we got folks who are awesome and would love to pray blessing and good things for your life. And these folks are trained to do it well and to do it with love. And so come get uh, prayer as you need it. I will lead us as we uh, head into the music portion in prayer. So God, we are so thankful for... Uh, Jesus, your ascension, and you're sending us the Holy Spirit. We ask that you would send the Holy Spirit right now. Holy Spirit, come. Jesus, we ask again, would you come? We seek again. What are you saying to us? What is the path that you have for us? What would you have us do with what you have given us? Would you open our doors, God? Help us to know that we are on the path you have. We ask that you would put us in places we couldn't even realize are going to help us to follow you, to be faithful to you. I give you all the credit, God, for any good thing that has happened to me in the last two years. I just ask God, would you multiply the stories in this community of your church carrying us, of you lifting us up and walking us down the road when it's too hard. I wanna pray for those of you who are in a valley right now. Holy Spirit, come and meet my friends, our family, and bring your rescue and your presence and your love. 
Help us to see and care for each other. Even on days where the weather's beautiful and we're having a barbecue, God, help us to see and, and share and care. Be with us as we worship you, God. Amen. Come and receive uh, prayer as God leads, and the worship team will let us know when the service is over. God bless you.
I really have a sense of God's presence here with us right now, um, and also a sense of uh, God's goodness and wanting to pour out more of his spirit and more of his goodness on you, on each person here. God has good things for you. He has made promises to you and to us, and he keeps his promises. I'd also like to encourage you to come forward for prayer. If there's something that uh, touched you in the message or something in worship that has spoken to you, or if you just want more of God, more of his presence, more of his spirit, um, these folks will pray a blessing for you. So come forward and get prayer. Um, yeah, thank you, God, for your presence here with us. Thank you for the way that you love us and you pour out on us and we pour out our praise on you and we worship you God thank you for the way that you love us we're going to continue to worship together here uh, this morning you're welcome to stay in worship if you need to go you're dismissed don't forget about the barbecue as if you could it's right out there um, so when you're ready, go get a hot dog or something. Um, bless you.
Amen. We lift up your name, God.